Okay, great. Hello and assalamu alaikum. I am Hena Lilaram and I am an Alpha MLSA from Meran University of Engineering and Technology, Jamshuru. Today we will be talking about what are Azure App Services, what they enable you to do, and then I will demonstrate how you can deploy your local website to Azure App Services on the Azure Cloud Platform. In this module, you will learn what are Azure App Services, how you can create a web app, how you can deploy your web application using an FTP. I will let you know what an FTP is and how you can connect your website with it. Then we will create a MySQL database. We will, we will connect your website to the MySQL database and we will move your local database to the live database. So as the name suggests services, Azure App Services basically are your platform as a service uh, offering from Azure that allows you to deploy your web-based applications on the cloud. You can deploy your web applications, mobile applications, RESTful APIs on the Azure Cloud Platform without worrying about all the underlying infrastructure and the operating systems. Azure App Services allows you to deploy your applications in multiple languages and frameworks such as .NET, PHP, Ruby, Python, Java, Node.js. And containers are not actually any languages. Basically, if you're developing an application and you do not, and you're using a platform that is not supported by Azure, then you can use containers. Containers are virtual environments in which you can deploy your website in whatever language that you are using. So in case you're uh, developing it in a website that is, using a, that is using a language that is not supported by Azure, then you can use Azure containers. With all these variety of languages comes the methods of deployment. In any of the following deployment methods you are comfortable with, you can use. You can use, it can be simple as an FTP, which is a file transfer protocol. This allows you to transfer your local files to your server. That is the Azure web app. You can use Dropbox, Dropbox DevOps, local Git command line, Bitbucket, GitHub, or any other. Uh, and there are also more, uh, such as OneDrive that I have not mentioned, mentioned yet, but there are more methods of deployment you can use. With these deployment methods, you can also choose between what operating systems that you want to use. You can switch between Linux or Windows, but for some platforms, you have to be confined to one operating system, such as if you're building your platform in .NET framework, then you won't be able to choose Linux as your operating system because .NET does not, do, only supports Windows. And for some Python websites, Python platforms, your supported operating system would be Linux. For other platforms, you can switch between Linux or Windows. With all these different variety of operating systems, there are many services and features that are enabled for you on Azure Cloud Platform. With Azure App Service comes Azure App Service Plan. Basically, it all starts from the App Service Plan. What is an App Service Plan? It is basically uh, is a service that allows you to maintain the scale and scope of your application. With scale and scope, I refer to the compute power your application will be using, the storage it will require, and the memory it will require. You can think of App Service Plan as a container that has multiple applications in it. You can have multiple app services associated within an App Service Plan. Each app service plan comes with some development slots. These deployment slots are instances of your website or web app. You can say that each slot is a version of your application. For example, you can have a production version and a deploy development version. Your developers will be working on the development slot and the production slot will be accessed by the will be the live website. 
it will be accessed by the public on the internet. So you can anytime if one of the slot is down, you can switch between the slots. So the bottom line is that it gives you a lot of configurations and maintenance options. It it's also helps you configure your billing, how much it will cost, and all the features that come with App Service. App Service, uh, Azure Web App Services, and to summarize, provides you the programming language you want to upload your website in, and you can choose between the deployment methods and you can choose between the operating system what you want to use without maintaining the underlying infrastructure and all the other details if you were deploying your website on on-premise servers. Now I will open the Azure portal and I will log in and I will let you know how you can go by deploying your website. I will follow some steps to deploy the website. First, we will create a web app, and then we will connect your web app to your local system using an FTP. Then after creating your web app, we will create a database in Azure portal. This will be your live database. This database will have no databases in it and any data in it. This will be like empty. And then you will have to move your local data to this live database. To that, for that, you can connect your database and move your local data to live database. After moving your local data to the live database, you have to connect your database to the website and on your local system, and then you have to deploy your website to live server. We will do step-by-step step all these steps to deploy it completely. First, I will create a static web app. For that, log into your Azure portal. You can let me know if I am going very fast or I should go slow because I don't know if you are able to understand every step. Is everything clear up till now? You can type yes or no in the chat to let me know to slow down my pace or maybe make it faster. Okay, great. So we are here in the Azure portal. In the search navigation type, App services. There's another thing I need to let you know that when you hover over the app services or any of the services provided by Azure, it gives you all the links where you can uh, easily set up. These are guides basically that are entire guides that let you know how to deploy using different methods, like how to container uh, deploy your containerized web apps if you do not if your platform is not being supported by Azure. So you can use these guides as well go to app services create a new app service by clicking on this create method create button here you will be displayed your subscription type and the resource group before creating any service on azure if it's a web app or a virtual machine First thing you need to do is create a resource group. A resource group is a container that, al that allows you to maintain your services that you're using. For now, I have already created a resource group named blog. I have a local website blog that I will be deploying. It's a sample website. You can create a new resource group by clicking at create new and type the name of the resource group. Then we will go into instant details. Here, name the website. It should be a unique name that is not being used already. For now, I will name my website as Demo Blog. It's checking if the name is available. This name is available. We will not go into Docker container details for now because this is a huge topic in its own. And then we will select the platform you're using for this application. I am using PHP 7.4. You can choose between .NET, Java, Node, PHP, Python, and Ruby. In the region, you have to select where your website will be hosted. If it, uh, I would recommend you to choose the nearest region. 
also the new regions are less costly you can also go with them for now i'm using uae north and then the app service plan i have not created an app service plan yet so i will create a new app service plan called demo blog click ok and then choose the compute power that will require There are a number of slots here for development, testing, production, and isolated. You can choose between how much compute power you will require. If you are going into production, you can choose between these. And for isolation, there are more options here. For now, we can select the free one, but I'm going to use the basic B1 because this requires, if this is, comes with SSL uh, certification, and when I will be connecting my database, I will require this certification. Click apply. Review and create. There's another great feature about this process that after creating and reviewing, you will be able to download a template for automation. This template will have all the parameters that you entered here while creating your web application. And the next time you come here to create a similar web application, you don't have to input all the details here. If you're going to use all the same uh, servers and all the parameters, then you can just use the template. Then click on Create. This will take a few moments. You can let me know if up till now you have any questions or if everything is clear in the chat. OK, so your website is deployed. Go to your resources and the demo blog you will see in the overview section, there are multiple tabs here where you can change settings, configurations for this application. In the overview, you can see a URL here. This is the live URL. Copy it and open it in the new tab. It will take a while. You can also copy, you can also uh, open it on your browsers Let me know if it's visible on your browsers. It's going to take a while. OK, so this is a static website. This is an HTML page that is that comes when you first deploy your website. And you can start uploading your files, your website files here. And they will be visible on this URL. You can later change this URL to your domain. Now we will go into our steps and then check what's next. We have created a web application called Demo Blog. Now we will connect our web application to our local system using an FTP. Before moving on, I will clear some concepts, concepts about FTP. It's basically a file transfer protocol. It's a standard communication protocol used to transfer local computer files to your server. You can use multiple FTPs. There is FileZilla and WinSCP. For this deployment, I am using WinSCP. You can go to the WinSCP website and download the FTP. On this website, you can go download. Exactly as this, you can download FileZilla, and there are other FTPs available on the internet. So I will open my FTP. When you open your FTP, you will see a window. This is similar to your file explorer. 
it's these are your local files and you will see your server files in this area to connect to your server select the new site option and in the host name and in the username and password we will use the parameters from our azure portal go to deployment center in deployment section There are some tabs here. Click on FTPS credentials and you will see there is a URL here. Copy it. It's called FTP endpoint. Paste it in the host name. Then copy the username. Paste it in the username and the password. In the password section, save, give it a name, demo blog and login. Paste the password again. And now you have brought in and connected your server website to your local FTP. If you can download, if you download this file, I'm downloading it in on my desktop. You can see hostings, start.html this is the same file if i open this file you can see this is the same page that was hosted on our live website this is the live website and this is on local i've um, downloaded this file in my local computer so this is an ftp you can use this to transfer your files to the server i have created an indexed file here this has nothing but a heading I will transfer this file to my server. Just drag and drop this to your Windows CP FTP, and you can see index. When you refresh the page, you will be able to see index. See? Now we will go to our presentation and check what is the next step we have to do. Now we have connected our web app to our local system using FTP. Then we will create a MySQL database in Azure portal. First, let me show you the local sample website I have created that I will deploy. This is a sample blog website I have created in a PHP framework called Laravel. This page simply shows you the data coming from the local database. I've created a local database called blog. This has a table post. These posts contain some data, my first post, my second post, description, and the author. And I've displayed these posts here. I will now move this data and database to my live server. In order to do that, I will create a database. In the search, search MySQL as your database for MySQL servers. Create a new database. There are two types of single server and flexible server databases. These depend on the scale and scope of the data that you want to store. You can read about them more in by clicking these links. For now, this is a small application, so we will go for single server database. The process is quite same. You have to select the resource group here, that is blog. Enter the name of your database, which is demo blog. For the location, I will recommend you to use the same servers as you use in the, the same region as you use for your web application. In the compute, settings i'm choosing basic because i do not require a lot of space for now 
and you can see all the cost that is being calculated on the side if you increase the storage then you can see you will be charged more according to it and this is an hourly charge and per month charge you will not be charged any cost until you use the database until your uh, database is active after creating you will not be charged any billing but after you start using the service i will click ok and then you have to create an administration account. This account will be associated with your database and you will use this account credentials to log into your uh, database from your system, from your local system. I will create demo admin. This name is available. I will create a password. Review and create. You can also download a template for automation and save it for later. I will create, click create to create this database. You can also see the cost associated with it. So the database is being deployed in, and it is in being processed. It will take a while to deploy the database. If you have any questions related to databases, you can post in the chat and I will answer them after I am done with deployment. Until it is being deployed, let me show you the local uh, database connection in my in my local application folder. In your Visual Studio Code IDE or any other IDE you're using, open your folder. This is the blog website that I've created. I've opened it. And in this folder, I have an env file. It's a .env file. In this env file, you have to configure all the environment variables that are being used you can see there is a variable called connection db host db port database database username password and ssl for now this application is connected to my local database which is localhost on port 3306 it is named blog and the username is root and password nothing your database has been deployed you can click on this database in the overview section you can see your server name your server login admin and all the details related to it and the usage of the database storage to connect your database to your local system open SQL workbench
In MySQL Connections, create a new connection. Here you'll be asked to enter a host name, port, username, password, and default schema. In the connection name, create, you can name this connection anything, but I will name it the same as the database name that is demo app, demo blog. For the host name, copy and paste the server name from Azure portal. In the username, you can go to connection security. Connection strings. Yes, this is the login username. Paste the username here and your host name. Copy it from this server name and click OK. This is the new connection. It will ask for password. So this, can you let me know why this error occurred? If you're wondering why this error occurred, it's because this does not recognize my system and it's not giving me the access. To access this database, I have to add my IP in the accessible IPs. In the connection security, you can add your current IP or you can add all the IPs starting from 0 to 255.255.255.255, all the IPs. For now, I'm enabling this. And now I will go back to my workbench. OK, I forgot to save changes. It's, ask, it's asking for a password. You have to use the same password that you created while creating the database. Now you have successfully connected your live database to your local system. Now create a new database here. I'm clicking on create new schema. I will name this database blog. You can see there is a new database here. Now I will import the data that is on my local system. In your local host my PHP admin, PHP my admin, go to your database, export the database. I have already exported the database. You just click go and the file will be exported. I have already exported the database here, so I'm not going to do that again. Just go to your import settings and click import from self-contained file. Browse the file where you saved it. Open it. Select the databases. Log. In the import progress, click start import. The import has finished. Now if you check your tables, or if you run a query, select all from posts. Okay, this is showing me an error. So no database was selected. Now you can see the data. I will create a new record. Testing. Testing new blog. This is a new row that I have added.
and I've added it in the live server. You can see in our local database that no new rows will be created because this is a local. And in the application, I am displaying local database. So there are only two rows of data. Now I will connect my local application to my live server. To do that, I will do the same configurations. In the overview tab, go to ser uh, copy the server name, paste it in DB host, copy the username, paste it in username. We don't have to change the database name because I named it blog. Enter the password of your user. Enable the SQL SSL. Save changes and then refresh. Now you can see it's displaying the data that I just added in my database. That is the live database. So now you have seen how you can create and connect a database to your local system. Now we will deploy this application that is on our local system to our live server. In order to do this, you have to go to your stdocs folder where you have created your blog website. You have to create a zip folder. I have already zipped it. And then you have to transfer this to your WinSCP FTP. This is a very easy way to do that. Just drag and drop it here. You can see your blog website was deployed here, but it's a zip folder. You have to extract it. When I was testing this, I realized that the FTP does not support extraction. Therefore, I have to also uh, de deploy another software here that will allow me to extract this folder. This is an unzipper software that will help me to un unzip this PHP uh, framework application because I think this FTP or the operating system that I have used ha is not allowing me to do that. Now I will go to my uh, website and go to unzip. What was the name? Unzipper.php. You can select the file that you need to unzip and the extraction folder. I will extract it in the root folder and click on unzip archive. This will take a while to unzip the files. You can see this is unzipping the files here. After a few moments, you will see a confirmation message on the site that will let you know that your files have been extracted completely. For now, most of the files have been extracted. In the environment file, I will change the connection settings because when I extracted the file, when I was compressing the file, I did not have the database connected to it. It was some demo database that I created while testing. So I will connect my database, or I'll just copy paste the connection settings.
save the file. Okay, the files have been extracted. Now to access your blog on the live website, as it was in the blog folder, you will go to slash blog. And your website is deployed successfully. And you can see this is connected to a live database. So this was it. This was the entire process of deploying your website to your live as your app service app. And if you have any questions, then you can let me know. Sure, I can send you the unzipper. Uh, I think I will just, yeah, sure, I'll send you. If you guys have any questions, you may start asking them because we have deployed our website and I should also share the link. You can access your web, the new blog website here. Let me know if it's opening on your side and you can access it. And if you have any questions related to how the deployment went and if anything related to databases or web apps, you can ask. Sure, which part do you want me to repeat? So you, do you want me to start a new session of connection? Okay, I will go to, sure, I will go to my web app. Let me go to all resources and I will, Check where my web app is. This is my app service demo blog. In the overview section. Oh, okay. Let me share. Thank you for letting me know. Is my screen visible now? I think it's visible. Yes, it is visible. Okay. Go to your demo blog app service. Well, I navigated from all the resources. Select the web application. Now go to overview. Select the uh, copy the, wait, uh, yeah. In the overview, you can see these are the live URL, but you cannot use this to connect to your FTP. You have to go to your deployment center settings. In the deployment center, let me just repeat that again. There is a section called deployment. In the deployment center, You will see some tabs here in the FTP as credentials. This is the FTP endpoint, which will be used as your host name. I will create a new site. Paste the host name here. And then copy the username, paste it here, copy the password, paste it here, and log in. Let me know if, if it was clear or did I miss anything? I hope it was clear. Another thing you, yes, it's clear, but basically 
the FTP was not allowing me to unzip. You can see there are no options to unzip. There's option to download, duplicate, move, delete, rename. Even in the custom commands, I was unable to unzip these files, probably because of the FTP does not allow you to unzip. I actually researched for it a lot, like totally gave it an hour on the internet to research on why is it not allowing to unzip. It should actually, it's an FTP after all. But I wasn't able to find it. Maybe for another application platform such as for Node.js probably it allows, or maybe it's the operating system issue. I will figure it out and I'll chat, uh, post it in the chat after I figure it out. But for now, we have to use this unzipper.php. Or you can not unzip and directly upload your file without unzipping, but that will take a while. Copy the, sure. So you want to uh, connect you want to connect to the server? I'm not getting how you want me to do it. Okay, I will copy the endpoint. I have copied the endpoint. Yes, yes, I have copied it. My computer. Do you want me to paste it here? Okay, but it will ask for authentication It's asking for a username. Okay, this is the username. Okay, and the password. Okay, but I don't see where did I Let me close everything and start again. My computer. Endpoint. I said. It's asking me to download the root folder. I don't know why. Okay, it's accessing the site, but it's using Win as the PFTP. I think you will have to download Win SCP. You can let me know. I will share the credentials with you and you can try connecting to it. And we can see what is problem on your site. Sure, you guys can connect to your computers and let me know if this is working. This is the end point. This is the username. You can also deploy Android apps. The process is same. You have to just zip your folder, entire Android application folder, and upload it to the server. 
and it will work just as same. You have to connect your database as well, and it needs to be on the server as well. If you guys have any other questions, you can ask me, and you can also try connecting to the endpoint and user credentials I've shared, and let me know if it works on your site. Azure Web App Service allows you to deploy your applications in multiple frameworks and platforms. And if your platform is not supported, you can also use containers to use your own platform. So there are a variety of options and also there are a variety of deployment options. You can use DevOps, GitHub, local, and Git, Git. And you can use multiple operating systems. So there are multiple variety of options in Azure Web App Services. So it's a great platform to host your website. Connecting to a virtual machine. I'm not sure how you're connecting to your virtual machine. Are you using an FTP? Okay, you can access your the website. Great, that is amazing. But I don't know why on my on my system it's opening WinSCP even though I am trying to open it in my in my PC. Deployment slots, we have them for different instances because instances, you can think of them as different versions of your application. For example, you can have a staging version, a staging slot or de development slot, a production slot, a testing slot, and you can move your application from each slot. If one of the slots that is in production that is actually accessed by the live um, public is goes down, then you can switch to another slot. It's different from a VM because you're not dealing with an operating system. You're not, you're not deploying your own operating system. The operating system and the framework that is PHP is already deployed on the Azure Web App Service. You don't have to care about the operating system because it's a platform as a service. I hope I've cleared your questions. Does that VM question answer that the answer makes sense for you? Yes, you don't have to install. For example, if you're developing a Node.js application, you have to install Node.js, but you don't have to install Node.js on Azure. It will already come pre-installed with all the NPM packages. You just have to deploy your website after creating a web app. If you would be doing it on a cPanel or any other server that you would have, then you would have to allow Node.js applications. You would have to install those frameworks on the server as well. You don't have to install those frameworks. If there are more questions, then you can let me know. I'm here to answer. Well, deploy means that your personal so local system is currently 
your system and it's not on the network that is not on the internet but the azure servers are on the internet and any people around the world can access those servers that is why to connect to the internet to make your website live you can deploy that to a live server or make your computer a live server by connecting it to the inter network. Let me just some quickly summarize everything. Well, in this session, we have covered how you can deploy your websites on Azure App Services using Azure Portal, and what languages you can use using App Services, and what deployment methods you can use, and the operating system. There are another. Uh, there are other operating. Uh, there are other deployment methods as well. There are other deployment methods that are way simpler from this one. This is a traditional deployment method. But uh, you can use the command line to do that. Git, you can use Git Bash, and you can even use the Visual Studio Code. It comes with a configuration that allow you to deploy your applications directly from your IDE. Well, if you're, uh, if every cloud platform uh, has its own services and features, I am not aware of what AWS provides as web application services and deployment service, though, so I'm not sure how to compare both. But for now, what I know is that Azure allows you to develop and deploy your application in a number of platforms. So you can use it as a deployment service. And you can research about both of them and figure out which suits best, best for your requirements. And also, the billings and costs will vary in both. So you can determine on the basis of your own research. Desktop DUI for database, do you mean workbench? I personally use SQL YOG, but there were some connection issues in that one. Um, there were some SSL certification issues in that one. Therefore, I wasn't using it. But mostly, the com most commonly used is uh, Workbench for MySQL.
it's great you can use mysql yog as well it's to it totally depends on up to you It's for everyone. It's not for businesses alone. If you want to, you don't want to have to worry about the maintenance of the infrastructure and all of the things that come along with it. With that, you can use app services, and you can deploy your websites. Even if it's a small website, you can deploy it to web services, and you do not have to worry about the platform or the or the operating system and all of the maintenance. Yes, sure, I will share a document related to that. The link I shared is from the Azure Learn, uh, sorry, the Microsoft Learn platform. You can learn any service of that is in the Azure platform from this website. You can navigate to different services. This is just app service. This is one part of Azure Cloud Computing, and you can learn about other services as well from the same platform. If you guys have no more questions, then I think I should wind up the session now. And it was amazing to let you know all these details and how amazing it is to deploy your website and see it live. And I hope you will try it soon. And with your student accounts, you can access 100 credits. Use those credits and deploy your websites and 